Hello, everybody. I am so happy to be back here. It's not normal for a premiere to happen and then the next show 30 days later, but life happens. And I do want to express my great gratitude to the Tang family and others, especially those who contacted me pretty regularly, who were so supportive of uh, Austin and I as we uh, went through this latest journey in our family. Um, hearing from you guys regularly just really, really helped me. And um, also, I want to give a shout out to, um, I don't want to call everybody's name, but I heard Um, we are back and going to be running some things that are kind of educational. And um, my folk, that's always been a big focus of mine is to try to educate people on what you're doing, saying, take what you're learning, pass it on to somebody else. That's a huge thing in life. And um, today we're going to talk about some terminology that's frequently used in the atheist community. And when I first came into it, it was very unknown to me. Um, I felt like you all were speaking a different language and I couldn't grasp it until I started reading through a dictionary. <laughs> and so I wanted to pull things together to kind of define um, some terminology and to make a, a glossary. Hope we didn't lose you. <laughs> a little bit of a connection problem. Bear with us temporarily while we get it uh, figured out. But I think uh, where Kathy was going with that was uh, learning some of the the technology that we use regular regularly uh, in the atheist community um, that you may have only started using once you become an atheist or become familiarized with with uh, atheism, and um, I think a lot of the terms have common usages, um, and a lot of them have usages within religion that are different from how they're used outside of religion. You know, so uh, when you start having a conversation about words like atheist. You, you may have a certain idea about what an atheist is if you come from a religious perspective. And it may turn out that people who label themselves atheists aren't using it that way at all. So is, is, that, is that kind of what your background was uh, coming out of religion, Oz? Uh, yeah, I was messaging uh, Aunt Kathy, let her know what to, what to do there. But yeah, it was uh, the... Um, everything that we got two. Oh, there's two oh. of you. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it was, uh, it said, yeah, it most said, of... go ahead. My internet, my router's just like three feet away from me. Oh, okay. I, I was just making sure you're connected. So yeah. Okay. Well, are we are we good? Can we try again? <laughs> so far, yep. so good. Yeah, just go pick ahead. up where you were. <laughs> okay. Well, I forget where I was, but <laughs> anyway. Learning learning new terms. And, oh my uh, gosh, we are learning new terms. But I yeah. wanted to, um, I wanted to to challenge you with something first, and I want you uh -oh. to put on your Christian hat. I'm sorry to make you do that, but this will nope, help. No, that's you. fine. I do it all the time. Um, okay. Put on your Christian hat. There's two people here I want you to meet, and then I want you to listen in on their conversation. Okay? All right. So. Can you see me? I can. All right. This is Laura, the librarian. I want you to meet Laura. Hi, Laura. Good to meet you, Laura. Hi. Hey, y'all. This is Bible Belt Betty Jo and Bible Belt Betty Jo and Lily the librarian. Lily, not Laura. Laura's her sister. Lily the librarian have become friends. 
and praise the Lord. It's just such a good thing. So um, I, I want you to listen in on a conversation that they had. Okay. Now, um, I don't know how well the costume changes are going to go, but we're, we're going to try. All right. Here we go. Very good with the accent. Betty Joe, Betty Joe, spear Betty Joe. Last night I, I read that. I read that thing. Gave me a piece of paper, and why it just said something about, about Jesus, and it told me that I could be born again, and so I did it. I did it. I, And Kathy, if you hear me, I think I think we might be better off not being on your Wi-Fi. <laughs> well, sometimes my cell phone signals better. So yeah. for everybody else here, uh, Aunt Kathy ordered a bunch of new equipment and it didn't show up. So we won't we will not have these issues in the future. Um, no, and actually, I think it may have been a clearer a cleaner signal with the accelerometer turned off and uh, her phone flipped the other way. It seemed like it was using less bandwidth that way. So I would recommend undoing that setting. So yeah. we're going to get it figured out, though, because this is going to be entertaining. <laughs> Are we back? Yep. And hey, Kathy, uh, Bryce had a good idea. Um, if you want to, real quick, I'll take you. I'll take you off the screen and go back and un undo the setting that. that can you hear me? You're so choppy, I can't stand it. Might try ty typing it in the chat, but uh, I think once you resolve that issue, uh, because it was perfectly clear with the accelerometer disengaged, so. Um, and I want to get to the end of that because I want to know how she was able to do that, uh, those accents. <laughs> You guys are not from the South, right? Or Aunt Kathy is not from the South, I don't think. Well, she spent quite a while down there um, uh, and pretty far South. So there's a little bit of an influence there. Mm -hmm. I am. Um, I, I, I'm very careful whenever I put on a faux accent. I mean, I'm not careful, but I try to be because I feel like I don't want to stereotype people or I don't want to, you know, perpetuate negative stereotypes. Uh, usually when I put on an accent from that area, it's trying to make, you know, that brand of Christianity look pretty bad. Just, and I don't even know why. So, but I don't think that that's what Aunt Kathy is doing here. And Aunt Kathy, if you can hear me, if you go into those settings and um, undo the, the change we had you do so you could touch the phone, because the was much better on the floor. Yeah, hopefully she heard that, but um, she should be able to hear us. But it sounded like she was having difficulty. It, it sounded like she said it was choppy as well. Yeah. But. What do you what do you think about that? Do I am I worrying too much? about um, misrepresenting or, or perpetuating negative stereotypes by trying to police myself with, with the accents. Because I did a video on my own uh, YouTube channel where I kind of was doing that. I was role playing and the Bible believing Christian was deep Southern thing. And I'm like, I didn't think about it until after the fact. I'm like, was that, is that like a, you know, prejudice or something? I don't know. I mean, the accent thing t to me is as long as, again, we're not attacking a, a person. See, see, I, I'm. I love satire. I love mm -hmm. comedy. So, to me, that stuff. If if we can't laugh at ourselves, if we take ourselves that serious, oh man, this is gonna be a boring fucking world. Yeah, and so far I haven't had any actual you know, complaints about that. Like I haven't told anyone 
no one's ever told me that, hey, you know, that's really disrespectful to Southerners the way that you put on that accent and try to make us look stupid. Because I'm not really trying to make Southerners look stupid. I'm just trying to make, uh, I'm trying to point out the picture. Can you hear us, Aunt Kathy? So it still looks like it's in uh, uh, horizontal to me. So she may have to be walked through that procedure, but uh, but yeah, what was I talking about? No, I no one's ever told me that I've been that I that they thought I was offensive for that reason. So maybe I'm just like overthinking it and overreacting. Yeah, right. I'm I'm gonna t text her that way. She gets the ping. I'm actually on Wi-Fi myself, um, and now I'm thinking I'm a little nervous. I feel like maybe I should have plugged in because it would suck if the same thing happened to me. Um, but modern technology, folks. So try to bear with us. I, I could start talking about words and and the meanings of words and whether they have meanings and, and kind of giving you my spiel about that, but I don't want to usurp anything that Kathy has planned. And I'm sure that we were, were planning to get to that. Yeah. Yep. And, and we'll get there. We'll, we'll help Aunt Kathy. No big deal. Um, <clears throat> but I, I was, when, had, when she had this um, idea, I was excited because I was like, no, I, I remember when I first started uh, kind of tiptoeing around, you know, atheist YouTube channels and then discords. And I'm like, um, nobody at church ever taught me this shit. What in the hell are they talking about? The words <laughs> that yeah, you're, yeah. you're talking about. What, what were some of the words that uh, you learned for the first time having become an atheist? Fallacy. Ah, well, that's a big, that's kind of an important one because you're yeah. probably using a lot of them as a theist. I suspect. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, yeah. well. It, it, it's all one big fallacy. It's just one big circular argument. Yeah, and I'm I'm wondering. Uh, I don't know if fallacy is one of the words that uh, Scott Tiff hears. Hey, Kathy, if you can hear us, can you keep your phone back a long ways? Let's see if that. Meanwhile, who do we have in the chat who I can entertain myself with? As always, Titan Uranus. <laughs> Titan Uranus. Sherry, Sherry Klim? Cool. Looks like a uh, regular uh, patron. Writer for Life 724. What do you write, Writer for Life? Cray Cray. I love Cray Cray. That's Cray Cray. <laughs> Secular Rarity. What's up, man? Scapegoat Iscariot. That's another cool name, too. Very clever. I should have come up with something cool like that, but. You know, I just had an idea, Bryce. I just had an idea. Give me one uh -oh. second. Should I, I have myself? A plan. What's your plan? Somebody's plan is to eat pie because their screen name is I like pie. All right. What we're going to do so that we can go help Aunt Kathy is um, I'm going to play a brand new video that Pasta Mike just launched today. And that gives us an opportunity to go backstage and, and, Help Aunt Kathy. How about that? Hello, because Pasta Mike, by yeah. the way. Speaking of him, he's in the chat, and I definitely need to say hello to him whenever he's around. So, Pasta, looks like we got something for you. All right. Well, we're going to play this, uh, and I watched it earlier. I'm going to be sharing it to my Facebook and Twitters and all that after we're done here, but this is awesome. So, Eat your heart out, and uh, we'll be back in no momento.
No that's not what I want. Free speech is only free. But do you know what Sharia law is? Yes, but it doesn't. What have do you know rights? what it is? See, Islam to me is one of the most is the most feminist religion, right? We got equal rights. Can you be offensive sometimes? Can you and be? It, some people but, feel. But threat. it's okay to be offensive. That's what free speech is all about. If free speech is only speech you like, it's not free speech. <laughs> America was not founded as a Muslim nation. What about one nation under God? Uh, one nation under God is a is a frustrating one. Under God. Um, obviously was not added to the pledge originally, uh, again, was added in the 1950s. Sharia law has been the subject of emotive headlines through its most extreme manifestations overseas, but here its use on a more domestic level has brought its own call for regulation. One nation indivisible was how it originally read, right? That, that's, we are an undivided nation and you're injecting religion, you're dividing the indivisible with religion. They are not outliers in the Muslim world that say like 90% of them believe death is the appropriate response to leaving the religion. If 90% of Brazilians thought that death was the appropriate response yeah. to leaving Catholicism, yeah. you would think it was a bigger deal. No. This is not based condemning on people, it's yeah, ideas. It's, and it's make and it people who believe in those yeah. ideas. We have been sold this meme of Islamophobia where Every criticism of the doctrine of Islam gets conflated with bigotry toward Muslims as people. Would it be better if we made it illegal in America to make fun of the Prophet Muhammad? Definitely, yeah. Well, I guess the first thing uh, one has to know about the First Amendment uh, is that it wouldn't be there at all if Thomas Jefferson had not insisted, without a Bill of Rights, and in particular, without a Bill of Rights that protected freedom of speech and freedom of the press, that he would not support the new Constitution. I was so upset and I was so mad. They insulted our religion, they insulted our prophet, and we couldn't take it. And they shouldn't be allowed to do that. Oh my God, big time. A Bill of Rights, this Bill of Rights, and this First Amendment uh, was an essential ingredient of the Constitution from the start. It protected a number of different sorts of speech, uh, beliefs, conscience, and the like. Do you understand the motivation behind the people then who, who strike out violently against people who depict the Prophet Muhammad? Yeah, I understand totally where from, yeah. You understand why they feel motivated to do that? Yes, because when you, when you, when you every day face frustration and you, you, you commit suicide, you don't care because you, you, your heart your heart is telling you, I don't want to live no more. In a way, they kind of deserve it. So. Yeah, yeah, no, every action has a consequence. It protects freedom of religion. It protects freedom of speech. It protects freedom of the press. It protects freedom of assembly. All of them. Through the many years since the drafting of the Constitution and the adoption of the Bill of Rights, which of course starts with the First Amendment. A man should not be questioned why he okay hit his wife because this is something between them leave them alone they sort out they can sort out their matters among themselves osama bin laden may allah have mercy on him he died as a muslim and it is an established part of our islamic creed that every muslim unlike the disbelievers will eventually enter paradise do you believe that sharia law should be above the u.s constitution yes yes should any religious law supersede the U.S. Constitution at any time, any denomination. Um, maybe in the future. Should Sharia law be over the U.S. Constitution? Yes. Maybe. The U.S. Constitution, which is made by people, mm. and the Sharia law is made by Allah. So that is all the way above. That has to be definitely in the land, not for the America, for the whole world would be above. So Sharia that law. should be above the U.S. Definitely. Constitution. Yes. And the verses in the Quran that talk about government do not specify any religious involvement. They say, put your trust in those that are in authority in your country. And it tells those people in authority to be just, not religious. Okay, but wait a minute. Just, but the, the, the true application of Sharia in countries is women can't drive. Mm -hmm. Women have to dress a certain way. They can't be seen in public with, with men that are not their relatives. Uh, in some cases, women need four male eyewitnesses for rape. Uh, gays and lesbians are killed. Those that, that leave the faith are viewed as apostates. They are killed for such... Uh, 
uh, religious liberty. So the reality is it is at odds with the U.S. Constitution. It's practical application. Do you feel more comfortable living under American law or do you feel more comfortable living under uh, Sharia law? Uh, uh, Sharia law. I'm a Muslim. I prefer Sharia law. Sharia law, yes. You prefer uh, Sharia law over American law? Of course, yeah. Will women be able to travel without a male guardian? Will women be able to be judges? Will a woman be able to run for president? There's a lot that is ambiguous and unknown. I realized I hadn't actually properly read the Quran. There were many parts that I didn't think were very fair, especially on women. I couldn't pray to a God that I didn't really think was there, or if he was, wasn't really listening to me. Very quickly, the situation deteriorated. I was actually stalked and given a death threat by a family member. Afghanistan, however, remains a hostile place to many women. Thousands have been held in jail or safe houses, accused of, quote, moral crimes, such as refusing to accept forced marriages or running away from abusive husbands. Our religion, Islam, does not let a woman do whatever she wants. According to Islamic law, a daughter must marry whomever her father chooses. Islam says whenever a father wants to marry away his daughter, eight, nine, ten years old, it doesn't matter. The woman belongs to him, and a woman has no right to refuse. There has been a huge gap in Afghanistan, um, and where the state courts have failed, these Sharia courts are able to come in to communities who may even be reticent to, to support the Taliban, but they offer justice. The media continues to be a sore point for the Muslim American community. It is hard to find a portrayal of a Muslim who is an ordinary Muslim with ordinary concerns, with an ordinary family. The violence extremist group have not helped Muslims in America. They have painted a picture that is not good. And Muslims in America find themselves, try to prove themselves. This, this is not us. This is not what represents us. About eight in 10 US Muslims tell us they are concerned about extremism in the name of Islam around the world today. And almost as many tell us that they are concerned about extremism in the name of Islam here in the United States. Overall, Muslims share the larger public's concerns about extremism in the name of Islam. If anything, Muslims are actually more concerned about extremism in the name of The fear for Muslims is that we are people who follow a faith that asks, asks us to kill people and hurt others, which is not the case, but that's what people believe. With the political climate that we're in today, certain people in certain positions play on that fear and play on that ignorance. So to summarize, what do you think the import of freedom of religion has been in the United States? The import of freedom of religion has been to allow us to come together in ways that we might not come together. That's number one. That's arguably the civic republicanism piece of the puzzle. Uh, on the other hand, or at least from a natural rights perspective, it allows individuals to live out their maximum life. It allows them to say, this is what I believe, and government can't stop me from believing that. And in that vein, it recognizes that people have rights of conscience. When we add those things together, in theory, it will move us toward a more perfect union. Not surprisingly, that's why uh, First Amendment rights, particularly the free exercise rights and the non-establishment clause, uh, combine in order to make sure that we can move toward a more perfect union. I always have mixed feelings about uh, videos like that. Um, one, I, I, I feel like uh, intuitively I agree with everything that it's saying, but intuition is not always right, you know, and it has to be tempered with reason and facts and evidence and all that other stuff. And frankly, anything that is coming out of, uh, you know, Sean Hannity's mouth, I have to take with a grain of salt as well same thing with yep. sam harris for that matter i mean he's he says a lot of correct things but he's also said incorrect things before so 
you know, so I have to uh, recognizing how one sided and biased the presentation was and that we only got to hear a few minutes from a couple of the people that were, you know, uh, Muslim and kind of, you know, against those sort of things. It seems a little imbalanced, but at the same time, it does seem intuitively with everything that's going on in the world there's a point there, you know, um, and there may be a bigger point like, uh, that last, uh, commenter godless granny just mentioned, and that maybe the problem is religion itself. If you didn't have religion, you wouldn't have religious extremists. Yeah. And going to that, that, that extreme and the atrocities that have been had by the hands of many different religions, that's, and then you know even my experience in the last you know three weeks four weeks uh on a on a much you know smaller scale is why I, i'm if not i'm damn close to sharing um uh hitchens position that religion poisons everything i mean that the, the more you know the the older i get the more i learn the more life experiences i have and the more i observe and and watch the world and what religion does. I, I can't not get pushed further, further in that direction. As, you, as what what are you? What is your position now, or what was your position prior that religion didn't poison everything? Or it was it poisoned it, some things and not others. Trying to be, um, I guess, charitable. You know, um, especially when I first, because it, it went like it, it was like a. Kind of, I had a little bit of a roller coaster ride. So, deconversion, and I was like, "Fuck religion, God, and everything." Mm -hmm. Then once I got to the angry atheist, and more to the empathetic, sympathetic part, it was like, "Well, you know, maybe there are some good things that religion does." And then the more I continued to study and observe and study, I'm like, "No, I, I, I actually, I, I don't, I don't think I can get behind that." You know, um, my position is actually somewhere in between. And I actually do think that religion can uh, be useful to people. It does offer some good things, but that doesn't contradict the statement that it poisons everything. You know, something something can be can have good uh, effects and harmful effects at the same time. You know, like a bowl of sugar. <laughs> sugar <laughs> tastes good. Um, if someone's having a hypoglycemic reaction, they may need a spoonful of sugar. You know. But if you just eat the entire bowl of sugar, you may go into a diabetic coma. So, you know, it's like um, sugar is poison if, if it's, you know, ingested in huge quantities. And it could be like that with anything. But we can we can see the effects of religion, especially when it's an extreme form of religion uh, or religion played uh, to the extreme. It's like like eating the whole bowl of sugar is extreme. Right. By eating just a teaspoon of sugar, probably not going to hurt somebody. So I kind of look yep. at it like that. And uh, pause to Mike here. Um, a good point, because I, I know this is what the reason behind the, the video. And since the content creator is here, um, let him uh, chime in. The point is simple. It's the First Amendment. It's not really to do with Muslims, uh, Muslims, uh, rather the countries that rule with religion, unlike the U.S., yeah, I get that as well. And um, I, but there is obviously a huge conflict between the fundamentals of Islam and the U.S. Constitution, and that there are some Muslims who are able to reconcile that. Um, I suspect th mostly through cognitive dissonance. You know, um, it's the law of the land. We have to obey the law of the land. Land, although they may in the back of their mind believe that sharia is superior they're not actively out there trying to make it the law of the land whereas these other muslims clearly if it were up to them sharia law would be the only law but that's in direct conflict with the u.s constitution there is no such thing as christian law unless you're in the church building then they have their own rules and laws but yeah as far as what govern all of us yeah yeah um there is jewish law which they don't follow for the most part you know they follow some of them but others not so much um no, they, but, didn't, right, they never cherry pick they never cherry pick <laughs> 
Yeah, but uh, Christian, the advantage, I guess, of Christianity, at least from my perspective, I forgot to take my Christian hat off. Uh, so I probably should do that at some point. I'll do it after this point. But the advantage of Christianity relative to some of the other religions that we're talking about with respect to the law is Christ freed us from the law, right? So there's no law in Christianity. It's just, it's all faith. It's, you don't have to be a slave to the law. You still have to obey the law of the lands and render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, but Christ didn't give you any laws that he expected you to follow. He gave two commandments, you know, love God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, however he puts it. And then love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, and then all the laws fulfilled with that. So that would be my answer, my Christian answer. And I gotta, all right, I gotta get that thing off. There we go. I'm back. Uh, in reality, Oh, it's the, here we go. Uh, yeah. Normal atheism, AKA the pasta man, pasta Mike religious law refers to ethical and moral codes taught by religions. Examples include Christian canon law, Islamic Sharia, Jewish. I, I always forget how to say that, but you can read it and Hindu law. Yeah. And that's a good point too. And this goes back to what the theme of this episode was originally supposed to be how words are used right how the word law in this case has kind of a different connotation um and it does i think mean all of those things in a certain context i think that if you were to go inside the religions themselves because that's more of an objective description of what religious law is but from within the religion of judaism they would say no it's god's law it's an expectation and we are authorized to enforce it you know uh we are you know we can put people to death based on uh, an infraction of God's law. The Muslims probably would say the same thing. I mean, the Quran, uh, excuse me, the Quran, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, does have instructions about, uh, you know, what the punishment for violating Allah's law ought to be. And, and the Hadiths take it a step further. So yeah, in the, uh, in the objective broader context, religious law isn't necessarily a law in the same sense that we think, you know, um, the government authorities are, but from the religious perspective, the reason they call it a law and not, you know, religious suggestions, <laughs> or religious ideas is because to them, this is something to be enforced, you know, whether, whether you, and like, it's not up to the individual, whether they're going to follow the law or not, it's a law. And therefore, if you don't follow it, there are consequences. So to speak. Yeah, they, they're not godly guidelines. No, they're laws for a damn, re, a damn good reason, according to their God. Yeah, uh, no, I, actually, no. I, they're they're laws for good reason, according to the people suggesting that this is from a God, right? Because we don't have we don't have any of the gods here to I explain whether you know they exist much less that they gave any laws at all so this is people passing down laws that they are asserting from a god i think that's what you probably meant yeah now you're just raining my parade brace i'm just kidding <laughs> all right a couple things here uh let's do this uh real quick we'll make it we'll make it brief but uh if you didn't know already now you're gonna know October 9th and 10th in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We have the first ever Tang meetup. It's titled Better. It's about having better conversations. Um, you know, how do we improve uh, our interactions and, you know, hopefully to make an impact, make a difference. You know, hopefully that's that's our goal uh, in doing that. And um, so we'll have tons of information, education, all that, but we're going to have a damn blast uh, as well well but bryce uh who's on that flyer there who's joining us we got a whole bunch of people we have the great seth andrews with his wonderful voice anthony magna bosco who i think inspires uh you with your uh, street epistemology um we've got a great friend cindy mcdonald she's been on my show a couple times i can't wait to have her back actually the person i'm probably looking most forward to meeting dave warnock um I don't know about you, Oz, but that's that's who I really want to meet uh, as soon as possible. And then we've got a uh, friend, uh, chair, armchair debater, T-Jump. 
<laughs> Tom Jump, <laughs> and uh, Dr. Josh Bowen, who uh, he wrote a book recently, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the book. Yep, yep, that's the one. The Atheist Handbook to the Old Testament. Thank you for moving your hand there uh, and not covering up the volume one. It's very important because uh, it's the most important part. Yeah, yeah, because because when there's a volume one, number two is coming. Number volume two is coming. Two, is. Volume two. Sorry. Yeah, and another real quick plug. Uh, starting this Sunday, two p.m. Eastern time, Dr. Josh and I will be going through one of his other books, Learn to oh. Read Ancient Sumerian. So, go to Amazon, cop the book, and learn how to read an ancient language with us. And then uh, lastly, finally, we got the hotel um, block raped and everything set. So uh, up in the left-hand corner there, that's the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum where we will be holding the event. And then right there in the bottom right-hand corner, that's the Holiday Inn right across the street from the Coliseum. So uh, the phone number's on there, 260-482-3800. Just call and say that you will be in town on the 9th and the 10th for better or um, the Tang event or whatever. There's a bunch of different ways that we listed it, so you should be good to go. They'll, they'll know what you're talking about. Um, but I think that's it. Now, uh, as far as uh, Aunt Kathy's concerned, we uh, decided to make sure we're giving good quality content uh we're gonna hold off and uh, we'll do this episode next thursday at 2 p.m eastern time and bryce if you're uh available um i know uh aunt kathy really wanted to have you on so uh we're we're gonna wait and uh, make sure she gets all of her uh, new equipment she ordered a new mic and camera and headset and and all that so it's probably just best for quality reasons to uh to pause and wait but yeah. uh bryce anything you got that. going on coming up? uh no i don't plan out my life that far in advance usually shit just falls in my lap and uh no <laughs> i my my schedule is clear on that day fortunately um i did get back into school uh this week so you know i'll be doing homework and stuff when i'm not doing you know when i'm not doing live streams i'm probably studying or reading or doing homework unfortunately cool um i had a joke and then i lost it so um jokes on me jokes on me <laughs> and uh, yeah and then there's requests all, all of a sudden there's this thing where everybody wants to see me take my hat off so there you go <laughs> it is an unusual appearance I, I have to say and you look like a different person with it off so it's probably why yep my my kids are like Dad, you look so scary with those hats on. And I was like, that's why I wear them. No, that's no. interesting. Yeah, because they're not, they wouldn't be used to seeing, they, this is how they know you. Ish. Regular. Ish. I, I mean, even at the house, no, I'm like, if I'm on, like, chilling on the couch or whatever, I'm not, I don't have a hat on. But like, anytime I leave the house, I always have a hat on. And I've, I've been like that since I played baseball. Like, I've just always wore a hat. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's anything else. Um, I was trying to think of anything else that we wanted to talk about. Yeah, we already plugged Josh's show. Oh, I just saw Josh was in there. What up? What up, Doctor Josh? Pretty good conversation happening in the chat too. So it's all good. Yep. Yeah, atheist sanctuary. Oz looks so much better without the hat. Friendlier. <laughs> <laughs> Proving my that, point. That's why he wears a hat. Got to look angry. That's what I always tell people, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, I do um, pride myself in doing the best I can do to stay calm and relaxed when I'm talking to, especially Christians now, because when it first, um, when we first started, my screen name was the atheist asshole. Mm -hmm. and I look back at it now, and I'm like, "Yeah, I was a dick." <laughs> <laughs> but you needed to be at that time you know that's yeah. the stage of atheism you were or that's the stage of deconstruction and deconversion that you were at you know which is normal for some people so yeah i was i was angry angry but uh <laughs> 
go down, Baldy. <laughs> All right. So we'll wrap it up again. Uh, Aunt Kathy, Kathy, Aunt Kathy will be back uh, next Thursday, 2 p.m. with all her new gear. I think she even told me she got a green screen. So she's going to be yeah. like balling, be balling next week. But yep. uh, everybody did the, uh, come to support Aunt Kathy. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, and we will be back in full force next week. And uh, Bryce will be back with us. And uh, until next time. Oh, tonight. That's Jesus. Uh, tonight. Uh, faith not included. Ah, don't, yes. Don't miss it. That's what I was trying to. It, it, I, it was on the tip of my tongue earlier. And that's what I forgot. But uh, you don't want to miss I've got the preview uh this one and uh let's just say jimmy's jimmy we have let's some laughs, laughs. <laughs> yeah let's say jimmy's jimmy um but uh yeah make sure you check them out 9 p.m eastern time live uh check the fellows out and uh, until then thank you guys peace <laughs>